That's amazing, Chris. You mean to tell us that at night you see the moon where the sun used to be in the sky? Well, I can't believe it. Chris, man, I thought this was one of those relaxing scenery videos. Did you give me a bloody heart attack then? When did you start actually editing your videos? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, CC here, Chris, from New York, uh, Westchester County. It's, um, 26. 25. We don't care who you are or when you recorded this video. What are you going to be talking about? <laughs> I don't know. Helpful? Well, regardless of what you're talking about, I'm sure it will be very, very... Well, it's gonna be something. Shut up and sit down, you big ball f Please subscribe. Okay, before we get into today's video, and just in case you missed it, last night was the first episode of The Creaky Blinder Show, which is my new live podcast. I'll be doing it every Tuesday evening from 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. GMT which I think is 2 till 3 p.m. Eastern. So if you missed it, just head over to the channel homepage and click on the podcast tab, and I will link the episode in the card somewhere up here. Right, back to the video. I bet you thought this was going to be sponsored, didn't you? <laughs> well, ha, ha, ha. I, I want to just bring up a couple things with you, real quick. Um, I, I'm, I want to talk to you today about weather. Yeah. Yeah, suits me. I'll talk about the weather, but I want to know whether everything you believe is as insane as your belief in the flat earth. Even though I think I already know the answer to that question. <laughs> I might put some clouds in there too. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You're doing well. I'm very proud of you. Good call. Clouds and weather go together like flat earthers and saying really stupid things on the internet. The 24 hour sun in Antarctica doesn't work on a flat earth. <laughs> And I'm not sure why you're proud of me, but thanks. Um, Is this why you're proud of me, Chris? Because I couldn't have done it without you. Nice. So I'm sitting there watching the uh, weatherman with his uh, fake globe, you know, the one that looks like an egg. Not really, no. So you mean that your weatherman uses a map that looks like this when he's telling you how the weather's going to be in Westchester County? <laughs> I still haven't been able to, to just, like, completely make it look like a circle. They've got to still make it look like an egg, guys. Come on, get with the program. If you're going to try to fake something, at least fake it and try and do it right. And have you ever considered the possibility that the reason it looks the way it looks is because it isn't fair? We've never guessed what shape the Earth is. It's been carefully measured. We know that it's an oblate spheroid. It's not a circle. It's never gonna be a circle, and it never has been a circle. My God. All right. So I'm watching these weather patterns, you know, so apparently in February, this is what happens. We just get hit with storm after storm after storm. The reason why it happens is we're getting this warm front from California and it swoops into the East Coast or it goes down south. And it's just a constant thing that happens in February because all the warm air is trying to get over to the other side of the country. Warm air. The weather patterns you're talking about are fundamentally linked to the Earth's spherical shape rotation and the result of atmospheric and oceanic processes. Now New York's winter storms, especially in February, are the result of a dynamic interaction between the jet stream, contrasting air masses, coastal influences and the formation of low pressure systems. Now I don't want to put words in your mouth Chris, but I promise you pal, it is not because the earth is flat. In fact, it's the exact opposite. You see, Weather is determined basically by, that's right, that big yellow circle in the sky. Yeah, basic is the perfect way to describe what you just said, Chris. Now that big yellow thing is a giant ball of nuclear fusion, providing the vast majority of Earth's energy. But, you know, basically covers a lot of complex atmospheric and oceanic processes. It's like saying a car is basically powered by the key. True on the most superficial level, but missing... Uh, everything important. Okay. Which is not 93 million miles away. It's local. Local, like 
down the street local? Does it have a little shop where it sells sunbeams and solar flares? And how exactly did you measure this local distance? Did you use a really, really long tape measure? Because scientists have used things like parallax measurements and the speed of light, you know, physics, to arrive at that 93 million miles. That's why it only lights up a portion of uh, Earth once in a while. Ah, so the Earth is like a giant table then, Chris, and the Sun, I suppose, is a desk lamp hovering just above it. Does it have one of those little pull chains? Because the sphere being illuminated by a distant, much larger sphere naturally creates a day-night cycle. It's called geometry. A local Sun, on the other hand, would have to be impossibly small and behave in ways that defy all known physics you know, to create the effects that we see. And then it goes around, see? It's a spotlight, basically. <laughs> you know, I've said this so many times, even I'm sick of saying it. Do these people ever listen to the things they say? That is completely ridiculous, Chris. Grow up. It's not measurable. You can't tell how far it is. You don't, you, you don't even know exactly where it is because what you're seeing is a reflection. So who knows exactly where it is? I rest my case. Everybody knows where it is, Chris. It's that big yellow thing we see in the sky. Okay, so the angle of the sun, in the wintertime, the sun doesn't get higher than that. Higher than what? All you did was that. That is not an accurate way of measuring or conveying how high we see the sun. Uh, oddly enough, the moon is right up there at 12 o'clock. Well, not at 12, but I mean, it, it's, it's literally right up in the sky where the sun should be. That's amazing, Chris. You mean to tell us that at night, you see the moon where the sun used to be in the sky? Well, I can't believe it. <laughs> That's how we call summer. That's where the sun is. The summer sun, right up there, okay? And then you have the winter sun. It never gets above that area right up there, okay? Just like, like right here. At some point, it's rude you'll have somebody's eye out. And what do you mean the sun is right here? What, two thirds of the way up the screens of the people who are watching this video? Chris, you're not making any sense and you generally don't, but today you're really not. Okay, that, that's where it circles around our flat land. And then when it gets longer and bigger, that means we get to a warmer weather. Now, when you're talking about longer and bigger, <laughs> I assume you're talking about the sun's orbit over your magical dirt pizza. So in order for the sun to work on a flat earth, that would mean that the further out it gets, the faster it would need to be traveling. So what? causes the sun to be able to increase and decrease the speed of its orbit above the dirt pizza. The, the sun is basically local, as I've always said. Ah, yes, but saying it and proving it are two very different things. Uh, and it's an amazing thing. It, it, it is what weathers everything here around this flat land. It's amazing. And it's amazing to me that a grown man would say something like that in a YouTube video, but there we go. <laughs> anyway, so another thing I, I've uh, um, asked. Now look, I know I've got a childish sense of humor, but did Chris just say that he'd asked some people? And, and that th those, you know, what, what makes the clouds not just fly off into space? Gravity! Have you ever heard of gravity? Gravity! Gravity! It's the same force that keeps us from floating off into space and holds down the atmosphere, including those pesky water droplets that form clouds. It's almost as if, Chris, there's a consistent set of physical laws governing the universe. You know, I see these weather patterns, you know, they like to do this little gully thing it looks like racetracks you know <laughs> uh, and, and 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 that's a gulf stream going up why, why isn't this going off into space I, I i don't understand this i don't understand why the clouds just go no don't take this the wrong way please chris i promise you i'm not trying to be mean or anything but it's pretty self-evident to everybody that watches you that it isn't just this you don't understand you don't seem to understand anything right off into space bye bye <laughs> we were going too fast 
Oh, it's gravity. So you're telling me gravity is holding on to nothing. You're right. Gravity isn't holding on to nothing. It's holding on to everything that has mass. The earth, the atmosphere, the oceans, your coffee cup, you even. It's all being pulled towards the earth's center of mass. Nothing has no mass. Therefore, gravity has no effect on it. It's not a difficult concept. <laughs> I don't know. I guess that's what it is, right? So gravity is holding on to nothing, which is a cloud, basically. You know, moisture or something. Uh, we don't know how much it weighs. Has anybody ever taken a measurement of how much a cloud actually weighs with the amount of water that's in it? Yes. The weight of rain clouds has been calculated, though it's not a single fixed number. The weight varies enormously depending on the size and type of cloud. You know how, where everything is on Earth, but yet we've only been, I don't know, how, how what, 20 per, We've only actually ch investigated 20% of the ocean? I mean, exploring the oceans is a little tricky for us, you know, because we haven't got gills and all that good stuff. But by your logic, until we've personally examined every single atom of the Earth, we know nothing. So we'll just throw out all of physics, geology, astronomy, because there is still some unanswered question. But yet we have maps and all sorts of shit and all this stuff. Uh, back in 1927, Hollywood came out with a map of, uh, of, of Earth. How is that possible? Well, we've known that the Earth is a globe since the 5th century BC, and the first confirmed accurate globe that reflected a relatively modern understanding of Earth's geography was created by Martin Beheim in 1492. So, uh, it's been a while, Chris, and I hope that brings you up to speed. Or, at the very least, explains to you how Hollywood were able to use an image of the globe all those years ago. We didn't have any spacecraft that could go up that far. And you know what? It matches exactly what they have in Hollywood now! Oh, what a coincidence, huh? This guy's just a f***ing idiot, isn't he? We guessed all of this stuff. It must have been a mirror. Oh, it was... They were using moon. That's right. They were using the moon. And they were getting the reflection off the moon. I see. Okay, that just answered it. That's how they got the map of Earth or, you know, that, that fake globe uh, that they spin around in, back in 1927 when we didn't have any technology to get up there. No, we didn't. See, and there's the problem with 99% of flat earthers. They all seem to think that you can't measure that the Earth is a globe or demonstrate that it's a globe from here on the globe. And they're all wrong. Okay, so gravity is holding on to nothing, clouds. So they're not flying off into space, right? And where well, they should. I don't understand why they're not. Yeah, we got that the first time you said it. I'm gonna agree with you 100%. Thank you. But they know what pressure is, right? But we all know what contains pressure, a cover. That is the only way you can have air pressure is being contained. But gravity is the container. It's a gravitational field, not a Tupperware box, Chris. Doesn't happen any, any other way, guys. Okay? The radiation belt doesn't create anything like that. The radiation belt is the dome over the flat land. That's all weather. So the dome that you think is over the flat earth is made of radiation. Wouldn't that be, you know incredibly dangerous for anything living beneath it don't forget to check out episode one of the creaky blinder show live it's on the channel homepage, but i'll link it below as well thanks for watching everybody love you bye so paddy walks into a pharmacy and asks the woman behind the counter if he could have um, some deodorant so the woman says ball or aerosol and paddy says neither is for my armpits